How are you, man? I'm Gil Roth, and you're listening to a bonus episode of my Virtual Memory Show podcast. This is a COVID check-in episode where I record remotely, of course, with a past guest of the podcast to find out how they're holding up during the pandemic, what sort of art or literature or media is helping them cope, and whether they're able to make art during the midst of this whole thing. Now, as far as how I'm doing, today was pretty boring, honestly. Um, I'd have watched golf if there was something on TV. It's a rainy Sunday. It's March 29th for those of you listening later on. I tried to get some reading in, but yeah, just not really focusing. And Amy and I took a couple of walks, one with our dog and one without. Um, this was the first day when I woke up from a nap, not quite knowing what day or time it was. Uh, that hasn't hit me yet until today, and that's not a great sign. But uh, But that's where we are. My thing also, I was kind of torn between doing one of these episodes today or producing one of the two remaining episodes I recorded during the uh, <laughs> the before times. I actually got started on one, uh, fixing the, the background noise and doing the technical stuff. But then I, I started listening to it, and the guest and I were, were talking about the festival that she and the other guests uh, were, were curating. It was going to be held in late April in New York City. And of course, that festival's canceled, but the whole idea that we were still thinking that such an event could happen. And this was recorded like March 4th, I think. It just really bummed me out. I don't know what it was uh, that thought that we still had that level of optimism then and things had changed so drastically. So I decided to do more of these check-in conversations instead. Now, my guest this time is checking in from the Upper West Side of New York City. He is Dan Perkins, who is better known as the political cartoonist and satirist Tom Tomorrow, creator of This Modern World, a strip that's been running in alt-weeklies for, for decades now. Uh, Dan, Tom Tomorrow, has a new collection that's supposed to come out this year called Life in the Stupid Verse, bringing together his strips from the, the Trump era. Now, you should visit Dan's site, thismodernworld.com, so you can find the link to Sparky's List, the paid subscription for Dan's work. If you become a subscriber, you'll get Dan's weekly strip every Sunday, a day or so before it gets syndicated, sent out to the online and, and print venues where it's run. And you'll also get his email commentary with it, which is it's really good stuff. It's sometimes it's about the strip itself or about his life or, or other things that are going on in the world. Um, Dan or Tom tomorrow has been doing great work for a long time and getting a subscription to Sparky's list or giving one as a gift is a great way to support him, especially as we're seeing the whole alt weekly ecosystem threatening to go under during the, the pandemic. Dan and I talk about that during the conversation. Now, as far as caveats go, not a lot this time, just, you know, the fact that it's remote as opposed to in-person changes the audio quality a little bit. Here's us. So, how are you <laughs> Hello, dealing? <Bill. laughs> Howdy, Dan. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Um, how yeah, are you coping I, or failing to cope, you know? No, you know, it, it's... Uh... I mean, I work at home, so I'm used to long stretches of solitude. This is just um, how my life is. But I balance that by being social. And I'm discovering how much I need that balance. Um, you know, even if it's only going out once or twice a week, it still it keeps me, uh, I don't know, connected to the world in a way sure. that... Uh, you know, like now I, I feel like I'm living in a spaceship right now, you know, but instead of like the void of space out my window, I've got these beautiful blossoming trees and, and you know, sunshine and whatever. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, we're all going through it, you know, it's, it's, we all got to deal with it, but it's challenging. But, you know, the very fact that when you were ready to record this, I was out taking a walk around the block in, in relatively suburban New Jersey. You know, it's it's different scenarios for all of us like this. I know it's it's a uniform. We're the two top states for, you know, infection figures and all that. But 
What no, was the? Yeah, uh, it's pretty oh, empty here, though. It's it's. I mean, I have you know, I have been trying to get out to take a walk. Uh, you know, I don't do it every day, but um, it's pretty empty when I do go out. So, yeah, and that's my question. What was the last thing you left the apartment for? Uh, uh, yesterday, I went out for a walk yesterday morning. Um, I live on the Upper West Side. I walked down, uh, walked through Central Park and then back up Central Park West. And it was, it's, you know, it's some real I Am Legend stuff out there. It's just, uh, you know, there are, there are, there are places, you know, especially when you're in the park where there are certainly enough people around, but everyone is clearly keeping their distance. Everyone is, seems very situationally aware to me, you know, aware of who's around them, uh, who they're, who they're about to walk close to. There's a lot of, uh, you know, as you're crossing, as you're crossing paths on the sidewalk, there's, you know, people will duck out in the street and it's very easy to duck out in the street because there's very little traffic right now. Right. Um, when you encounter somebody who is not engaging in those sorts of practices, you know, do you, do you scowl or otherwise? I just keep my want to hit him with a baseball bat. Okay. No, I just I just keep my distance. I mean, it's it's also it's New York. There are still um, there are, there are still people out there who are uh, uh, you you know just not in the right mind, and sure. you just kind of have to you know. You're always I I feel like in normal times in the city, if you're a if you're a uh, if you're a sort of aware person living in the city, you're always kind of clocking who's around you and what the possible uh, what the possible uh, sources of confrontation might be. And, and in a way, it's actually much easier because there are so many fewer people around you. Hmm. Should I feel guilty that I laughed at the last panel of your your next week's <laughs> This Modern World? <laughs> Never feel guilty for laughing at This Modern World. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was my thing. I figured at least I can laugh. It, it's a horrifying image, but I thought, well, uh, okay, A, he's got the chops to, to make it funny. B, we need to laugh at something. Um, how tough is that? You know, A, there's the focusing on work in general, but B, your work in particular, trying to do political satire with some sort of humor in it, you know, how, how, how much tougher is it right now? Well, you know, people have been saying since Trump was elected, oh, you have so much material now, it must be wonderful. And the thing that I always say is, no, it is not wonderful. Um, satire is the art of taking something to an absurd extreme. And we've been living in an absurd extreme since Trump was elected. It's, it's really hard to come up with something, um, you know, uh, something absurd and over the top that, that he, he doesn't actually end up doing. Um, so it's, it's been a challenge all along. Uh, yeah, right now I think the challenge is just keeping my head from exploding, but, uh, you know, I just I take a lot of notes and try to put it together as I'm sitting here staring at the Internet all day, because that's what we do now and try to put it together into something at the end of the week. But it is also then, you know, and that's that's just been a challenge for three years. But now you have this extra burden of just uh, this this uh, weight on you, you know, just this this constantly horrific news Um that, yeah, it, it is just sort of hard to find the motivation to work. Hmm. Um, is there a sense of, I don't want to say doing it for the audience, but, you know, doing it for the audience, making sure they're getting something, knowing that they expect, you know, not that they expect the laugh laugh, but, you know, that, that there are people out there who think, you know, I just want to see what, Tom tomorrow is going to do next or how they're going to treat it next, you know? Yeah. Um, I guess there's just a, you know, hitting the deadline is pretty ingrained. And I mean, as you know, I've had a kind of difficult couple of years in my personal life anyway, and hitting the deadline has just been, um, you know, it's, it's, it is, it is the thing that keeps me grounded. It is, it is the thing that gives me a routine. I don't, I don't, I don't get up and go to a job. Nobody does anymore, but you know what I mean? I don't yeah. have a sort of regular job. Um, and actually I should, 
backtrack and say a lot of people are getting up and going to their jobs and, and we should all be incredibly grateful to them when they are yeah. going to their jobs in the hospitals and the grocery stores. I actually put up early on in this thing, like maybe two and a half weeks ago, I put up a note on my uh, front door that just said thank you to all the delivery people. And, and I, I would encourage everyone to do this because there's, you know, I mean, you, if somebody's, you know, you can tip certain people, you can't tip the UPS guy, you can't tip the mail person, but you can at least put up a note and say thank you for showing up to work because they are yeah. there. They're what's keeping us going as we all hunker down in our little spaceships here, you know? Yeah, I was talking with a pal, not on mic, but uh, just about the the potential for labor to come out of this thinking, we're actually a lot more valuable than we thought we were prior to yeah. this. No, I'm, you know? I'm, I, hope people, I hope people continue to recognize that when things eventually normalize. Mm. Yeah, do you have any, uh, not optimism, but just any vision for what the world might be like? after this if there is an after this oh <laughs> or it becomes our, our regular state i you know i i can't even think that far ahead um i i have no idea you've read a lot of science fiction dystopia but you know well sure i mean but i i'm trying not to uh put more negativity into the world than is absolutely necessary so you know <laughs> <laughs> that world where we're all hunkered down around the fire talking about the olden times i i yeah. you know i i, I don't I don't, I don't want to think that that is our future. And I don't believe it is. I'm just not sure, you know, this will play out eventually. Um, I think there's going to, it's just going to be a really hard time in the meantime. And, you know, like yeah. people aren't going to make it. There's going to be, we're going to lose people. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's going to be a hard time and we just have to get through it, I guess. Have you thought about a um, what to you would signal normalcy, like a, a oh, place God. you would go that would just say, "Oh, this this means not that we're out of the woods, but yeah, you know, that we're, yeah." There's a little bar across the street from where I live, where I hang out with friends that live in the neighborhood, and if I could just go and have a drink with my friends at the little neighborhood bar, then life would feel halfway normal again. Mm -hmm. There, um, well, I know you're able to focus on on the work enough. Able to to read much at this point, or no, I haven't been doing any reading. I stare at Twitter. I, I Skype Same with I Skype with some friends, um, which kind of keeps me connected. Uh, I watch TV. I watch the most mindless, or yeah, I just I, I watch them. I watch the most escapist TV I can find. Uh, I haven't picked up a book since this whole thing started. Yeah. In fact, the, yeah, the, book, the book that was next on my list to read is Chuck Wendig's The Wanderers, which is about a pandemic sweeping uh, the world. And I just, you know, everyone says it's a fabulous book, but I just can't bring myself to, to, to read that right now. Yeah. Hashtag too soon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was uh, Peter Cooper was yesterday and he mentioned that right before the trip to Oaxaca that he just came back from um, leaving Mexico for the Upper West Side, which yeah. involved his own risk benefit assessment. Right. Um, the Andromeda strain. He just uh -oh. happened to have picked up the Andromeda strain right before the trip. And, oh, my know. God. You know, so so if you scroll through, uh, I can't remember if it's <clears throat> I can't remember if it's Netflix or Amazon, but if you scroll through. Uh, Contagion is one of the top streaming movies right now. And I'm like, are you people insane? Why would you do that to yourselves? Yeah, I, I think when when things weren't quite as serious, I could understand people like like in February, I could see people thinking maybe they'd want to see that and, and, you know, get an idea of how it progresses. Once mm, we started rolling into March and things sort of going off the rails. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm with you in terms of. Amy and I watched I, Tanya yesterday, the the Tanya Harding. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> pick, which was great. Has nothing to do with what we're going through now. Great performances. It took our minds well, off things for two hours. Yeah. yeah. As you know, I'm a big fan of of, of old movies and of bad movies and, and mm -hmm. strange, uh, schlocky movies. Yeah. Uh, so, and I realized, uh, so... Our mutual friend Richard Cadry uh, put out a PDF of every movie that 
uh, is mentioned in his Sandman Swim series. And um, I've seen many of them, but I was going through it and I realized I had never seen the, the, you know, I'm using air quotes here, but you can't see it, but the classic science fiction movie, This Island Earth. And I have to say, it is remarkably, remarkably entertainingly bad. Now, it's, I guess it was used on Mystery Science Theater, but honestly, I, d I don't need to hear other people wisecracking when I'm watching a movie like that. Like, I have my own running commentary in my head, and I, I kind of enjoy that more. And it's a remarkably, strangely bad movie with the most, with the, the, if you think about the plot after you've seen it, it is just kind of the weirdest plot of moving characters around so that things can happen. Um, but I, I, I enjoyed that a great deal. Hmm. I, I think not just that it was Mystery Science Theater. I think when they did a theatrical movie, that was the one they picked. Uh -huh. When they actually did uh -huh. MST3K for the theater. Well, now that I've did. seen it, now that I've seen it, I'm, I'm going to have to go back and find their version of it um, just to see what they did with it because I had thoughts of my own. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like there's a scene early on where the scientists are being sort of sucked into this thing by these aliens and the aliens are, you know, but they're on Earth and they, we don't know that they're aliens except that they have red skin and white hair and there are a couple of them and nobody, nobody comments on this. Nobody says... Why do you have red skin and a bulging forehead and white hair, and and also your friend over there does? Are you guys brothers or something? Like like nobody <laughs> even they just don't even just mention it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It seems implausible enough, but you know I'm sure we'll all be binging our way through schlock and everything else we can find over the next couple of weeks. Uh, the other thing you you mentioned uh, on online, you were I think starting with Star Trek: The Next Generation. Well, I just watched uh, Picard. Um, oh, okay, I, I wasn't and, sure if you were planning on doing the entire everything no, Star no, no, Trek no. that had been. I, I just watched we'll Picard, and and it made me want to go back and watch one of the classic episodes. So I went back to the first season, and oh my god! I mean, honestly, Patrick Stewart is probably younger in that than I am today. But you know, he was much older than me when I started watching that, and to see to to look at this at this. Uh, this actor who was playing this this older wise captain, and in the first season he just looks like a baby. It's really it's it's striking. <laughs> yeah, the baldness was you know meant to to kind of convey that maturity and wisdom, but yeah, yeah he was so yeah. much younger. Oh, that was our friend. Well, my friend Tom Spurgeon's great line many many years ago um, that he knew he was old when he was older than Ed Asner was playing Lou Grant in Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> <laughs> He was only about 40 when, when he, oh, he was wow. playing that role. And we always think of him as this yeah. gruff old man. You're like, wait right. a second, he's younger than we were. So. Right, wow. Oh, this is rough. Um, the alt-weekly thing, are you getting news on venues of yours that are Ooh, either yeah. on hiatus or having trouble? Um, yeah, it's... it's I, mean, I know it's a big worry for you, and I'll talk this, about the subscription list in the intro to this sure, so people know how to, to support your work. But um, Yeah, no, I knew the second this hit. Um, I mean, I went through it. I got whacked in the 2008 uh, uh, financial meltdown. Um, it's these things, you know, nothing is unaffected. And um, especially a thing like this, the all weeklies are really just hanging on by their fingernails as it is. Uh, yeah, so I've I've lost a couple already. Um, the thing they don't always reach out to me when they shut down, um, so it's gonna it's gonna be a month or two before I actually have a sense of the of how bad it is. But um, the 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 warning lights are flashing. You know, the klaxon is very loud right now. <sighs> um, and it's yeah, as you know, like. <laughs> I used to be married to someone with tenure with a guaranteed job, and that was kind of my security in the world. And it's kind of terrifying right now to have had that, to have lost that, and uh, and be facing, uh, you know, really the, the potential extinction of my uh, income, uh, if not for, as I say, and you're going to talk about it, but so I don't, I'm not going to go into it too much, but I, I do the direct reader support model and. I'm kind of wondering if that's going to actually be my main source of income in the next year or two. Yeah, it's it's one of those things like for all the plugging I used to do for my own Patreon, I, I with a bunch of these 
COVID episodes, I've been saying, just go give to other people. You know, I, I have a job that covers all the expenses for PBOA, uh, from uh, PBOA for, for doing this. Right. Just, you know, support writers, support artists. But it's tough when it's an ecosystem of other writers and artists, you know, all trying to support each other and, and you know, yeah, no no, outside money coming it, in. It, it has to break out from that, of course. It, it, yeah, or else it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ecosystem that's going to collapse. Any, uh, well, <laughs> I shudder to ask, you know, do, do you at least have a November uh, uh, panel or a strip in mind for, for post-election one way or the other? Are you, are you remotely Yo, what optimistic? What, what are you even, th- what, what, <laughs> <laughs> what is that question? Oh my God. I'm sort of hoping that we have some vision, <laughs> vision of next November, you know? That's, that's, oh my <laughs> God. No, we have so many so many roadblocks between now and November. No, I'm, I'm right now. I'm right now. I can't even imagine what I'm going to write about next week. I mean, no, that's, that's, uh, that's a million miles away. I get you. And no more debates and seemingly no more primaries for a while either. Yeah. So. yeah. Oh, yeah. Anything you want to tell listeners outside of, you know, send booze and, and hookers. <laughs> send face masks. I don't know. Apparently we're supposed to wear them after all, but I have no idea where you'd even find one. Well, Ellen Lindner has been, a, uh, if you follow her on Instagram, the cartoonist, she's been making them at home. I, I don't know oh, if wow. you're pals enough with her to, to hit her up for a, a spare, but you know, they're very fashionable and, and chic, but I actually had one of my, um, one of the pharmaceutical manufacturers I represent uh, up in Montreal, they they wrote me yesterday saying a partner company of theirs is making tons of, of personal protection gear more than the Canadian government needs. And do wow. I, Gil, have a contact with U.S. government that I can help them figure out where to send it in the U.S.? Um, so I gave them my address and just ship, ship here. I'll, I'll figure out where to send everything afterwards, but you yeah, know, just, just yeah. get me everything and uh, it'll go to a good home. It, that's okay. Right. I don't, I don't think they trust me enough for that though. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Dan, we'll catch up again soon. Um, stay safe. You know, you're, I would say you're doing God's work, but we both know God is dead. So you're doing great work. Uh, <laughs> well, you've seen the new cartoon. You've seen you've seen our God and what he's what, what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been reading Kurt Anderson's uh, Fantasy Land, which uh, you know is, it's almost just minute for minute with you know what what's going on here with you know his whole history of how America went haywire. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, we'll talk more soon. Yeah, nice Again, talking to you. Well, Stay I, safe, and uh, I miss hanging out and having dinner. That so, that will be our sign of of normalcy. That will be that another actually, sign of normalcy. That I could drive into the Upper West Side, and we can get that uh, that Indian restaurant around the corner from you. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. Cool, man. Okay, man. Well. Take care. You too. Talk to you soon. Bye. Nice. And that was Dan Perkins, also known as Tom Tomorrow. Go check out this modern world dot com for more of his work and a link to Sparky's list, his subscription email. There's also a donate button there if you want to toss a little extra money in in his tip jar. And when you see his new book, Life in the Stupid Verse, up for pre order, go ahead and pre order it. It's it's worth it. And Dan's also on Twitter as Tom Tomorrow, all one word, and on Instagram as Real Tom Tomorrow if you're the following type. And we'll be back maybe daily with more of these COVID check-ins. If you want to send me a little update to read on the air or you have something you want to share with the listeners, let me know and we'll set something up. I'm at groth18, that's G-R-O-T-H-1-8, at gmail.com. You can find contact info at both of our sites, vmspod.com or chimeraobscura.com slash vm. Oh, I also created a page just for these. It's chimeraobscura.com slash vm slash the COVID sessions with a dash in between each one. There'll be a link to that in the, uh, the show notes for the episode. And if you're interested in the setup I'm using, uh, this is Zencaster uh, that records the remote uh, the remote episodes. Uh, it's spelled Z E N C A S T R. So it's missing the final E. Uh, Zencaster is, there's a hobby level that's free. Otherwise it's 20 bucks a month, which is what I signed up for. So I could do the show this often. Um, 
my Patreon supporters more than cover that expense, especially since I don't have tolls, parking, all that stuff anymore for in-person shows. So do not contribute to my Patreon. Do contribute to other people's Patreons or their Indiegogos or Kickstarters or GoFundMes, whatever the hell it is. If you know artists or writers or other people who need money or need help and you're in a position to help them, please do it. Show them some support. There's a lot of people out there in need right now. Um, you might be one of them. If you can't spare it, don't feel guilty. Um, but also don't hesitate to ask for help. Anyway, I'm rambling on. I am Gil Roth. This was a bonus episode of my virtual memory show, and I thank you so much for listening. Keep the conversation going, stay safe, and wash your damn hands.